When I was first getting started with my knife making career and was setting up my shop, one of the most difficult things for me was figuring out where to invest my money and what tools would be the most important to have in my shop. So now that I have a lot of experience with knife making, I thought I'd make a little bit of a video and give you guys my top five most important tools for the knife shop. And that might help you get started and figure out where to invest your money because high quality tools are the key to being efficient and happy with the work that you're doing. And I of course use a lot more tools outside of these five for any knife that I make, but these are the five pieces of equipment that if I didn't have access to them or one of my machines broke, the efficiency of my work and the amount of knives that I could put out would go way down. So without further ado, here are the five top knife making tools for my workshop. I'm going to start out by just listing my top five, and then I'm going to go into more detail on each piece of equipment and explain how I use them and why I find them important for my shop. Starting the list off at number five is something that I could honestly put at number one since health and safety are so important, but since it's not really a piece of equipment, I didn't think it'd be right to put it at number one, but that is respirators, ear protection, and eye protection. And then coming in at number four is going to be a heat treating oven. Number three is a drill press. Number two is a metal cutting bandsaw. And number one is a two by 72 grinder. So now let's get into more detail on each of those top fives so you can learn how I use them and why they're important. Breathing in any fine dust is never good for your lung health. But a lot of the materials that we as knife makers use, like G10 and carbon fiber, are especially dangerous for our lung health. So for that reason, it's really important for me to, whenever I'm working in the shop, to wear my P100 face mask respirator that protects my lungs from that dust. And then since we're working with a lot of loud machines that can really damage your hearing, I always wear these heavy duty earmuffs and also some wireless headphones that enable me to listen to my music or audiobooks or podcasts while I'm working. And then that always is really nice to be able to learn something new or entertain yourself at the long hours at your grinder. And then in order to protect your eyes from any metal shavings that are flying in the air or wood or anything else in the air, I always also wear my safety glasses. And then the final thing that I wear is a hat in order to keep some extra dust from going in my hair or flying into my eyes. Once it's all on, it's not the most comfortable of outfits, but it sure beats having lung cancer, going deaf, and being blind. So at number four is also the newest addition to my shop, which is the Even Heat KH418 heat treating oven. I have my heat treating oven set up with the tap controller, which makes it really nice for keeping track of your heat treatment schedules and also monitoring the temperature of your kiln and of the blades. I also have the ceramic blade fixture, which helps keep your knives upright while they're heating up. And then I have my quenching oils in some military ammo canisters with some Parks 50 and Parks AAA oils. And I just use each of those depending on what steel I'm heat treating. I used to only send out my knives to be professionally heat treated, but since I got this kiln in the last year or so, it's been really nice to have the freedom of being able to control my own workflow. It's really nice to be able to start on a knife project and finish it within a week and not have to worry about sending off a huge batch of 100 knives to be heat treated and have to wait for them to come back in about a month. Just being able to heat treat my own steels has given me a lot more freedom and even though right now I'm mostly just doing carbon steels and Damascus in my heat treating oven, I also have the ability to, in the future, heat treat my own stainless steels. I still think that you could get by without having a heat treating oven in your shop, but having the ability to take control of the entire knife making process all within your shop is a really freeing feeling. So now that we're done with number four on the list, let's go ahead and move on to number three, the drill press. Next on the list, we have my drill press. And even though the drill press isn't a super glamorous machine, it's very important in order to get straight holes through anything that you're drilling. So if you want to attach a handle onto a knife or drill through kydex for rivets or make tang holes in a blade, you're going to want something that'll drill a really nice straight hole. And that's exactly what a drill press will be able to do for you. The one I have is a WEN. It's just kind of a medium range drill press that I think you can get from Home Depot or Amazon. And it's worked out really well for me. 
One thing that I would say is really important is to get good drill bits. So I like to use cobalt drill bits and also learn how to resharpen your drill bits. Because often when you're drilling something like steel, the drill bits can burn or chip and become dull, but being able to resharpen them three or four times can really extend the life of those drill bits and save you a lot of money in the long run. In this video, I have one of the cobalt drill bits in my drill press and I'm drilling some pinholes into the tang of a knife blank. That helps me attach the handles and also have weight reduction in the tang. So coming in at number two, we have my portable bandsaw. I use this to cut every type of material you can think of, like handle material, blade stock, pin stock, kydex, and a bunch of other stuff. The one that I have is a DeWalt portaband with a swag off-road table that I have hooked up to a foot switch. So I can just control it using my foot like this. And that makes me very hands-free and have both of my hands available to guide the material. I have bimetal blades. This is a brand I use, Lenox. They're just some bimetal blades and I believe I usually do like 18 TPI. And this machine saves me a ton of time and I'm also able to cut really tight corners with it. And I used to use a hacksaw like this, but as you'll see in this little time comparison coming up, the bandsaw saves a ton of time. To give you an idea of how much time the bandsaw will save you over the hacksaw, I'm going to do a little bit of a cut comparison on the scrap of Damascus steel and see how long each one takes. Hopefully from that comparison, you can see that with the hacksaw, I was only able to cut through around a quarter of an inch of the steel in around 30 seconds. Whereas with the bandsaw, I cut through the entire thing in just about 15 seconds. So if you multiply that time difference by let's say 10 knives, you can really easily see how much time having the bandsaw could save you. One thing that I forgot to mention is being able to use the portable bandsaw to make curved cuts and also tighter radius cuts has allowed me to be much more efficient in the use of my material compared to when I used the hacksaw. And that always gives me a lot of extra material that I can use for stuff like micro knives, handle material inlays, or other small projects that I have going on in the shop. And finally, at number one on my list, we have my 2x72 grinder. I use my grinder for pretty much every single stage of making a knife. So I use it for shaping knives, grinding the bevels on blades, shaping handles, buffing handles, sharpening the knives, and everything in between. The grinder that I'm using right now is a Broadbeck Ironworks 2x72, and I have it set up with a variable speed drive, so I can turn the speed all the way down if I want to have extra control when I'm using it. And I also have a little magnetic LED light that I can use to shine light exactly where I'm grinding. I really like this grinder because it's super versatile and I can flip it horizontally if I'd like, like that, so I can grind horizontally. And I also have a lot of good attachments like the buffing wheel and small wheel attachments for it. Here I have my grinder flipped horizontally with a small wheel attachment. I'm able to use that to profile the inside radii of the knife blank where your fingers go. And here I have the buffing attachment on the grinder, which I'm just using to polish up some resin handle material to a really high final gloss finish. Now given that they have so many uses, the 2x72 grinders are very expensive and will be one of the biggest purchases for your knife shop. One or two a little bit more cost effective options that if you're just getting started would be a 1x30 grinder or a 2x42 grinder and I've seen a lot of people make some really beautiful knives using those tools and I personally used a 1x30 when I was starting out. But definitely if you're able to upgrade to a 2x72 you'll notice a huge increase in the efficiency of your work and also the quality of your work will go up by a lot. I know mine did and I'm sure yours will as well. And that's my top five most important tools for the knife shop. Be sure to let me know what your top five would be in the comments section below. And if you have any questions about the tools that I showed in the video or any other knife making tools in general, let me know and I'll do my best to help you out. Thanks for watching and be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next video. Stay sharp.